I'm Lainey Harper and this is Harper's Handcrafted Projects. Today we are building a workbench. Well, today we're building the top of a workbench. It's going to be awesome. I have needed a workbench for way longer than I care to admit. And I've been using two sawhorses and a piece of plywood. Not my favorite setup. It's not very stable. Things get kind of jiggly if you get too aggressive with any part that is on top of the wood. So, we're gonna remedy that. I have two desks that were gifted to me. Uh, they were found on Facebook Marketplace for 25 bucks a piece. They've got beautiful tops. The, the wood is in really good condition. The finish is yeah, kind of gross, but the wood is in good condition and it's uh, sort of a glued up butcher block type, but it's just uh, like 16 pieces of one, one and a half square board. So what we're gonna do is pop them apart if they wanna come apart and then re-glue them but adding biscuits to realign them and have, have more glue surface. So we're gonna use a biscuit joiner, pipe clamps, a circular saw, and a new method to do straight edge cuts with a circular saw, so a block planer, and sanding. So pretty low uh, material like uh, actual tools if you don't have an actual planing machine uh, it would be a lot easier if I had one but we're gonna do it by hand this time and see how that goes so we're gonna pop them apart best we can um, clamp them mark them where the biscuits should go uh, cut biscuit holes and biscuits are oblong discs of wood that you seat in between two pieces of wood to um, align them better. And then we're gonna glue them and clamp them and then plane it to where it's flat and then sand it to where it's beautiful. And then we'll have the tabletop done. And then the base is a different story. But that's our process. Let's get started. We have our tabletop and this actually, it's come apart and that's why we're gluing it together. But some of the parts, some of the pieces decided that they aren't ready to split yet. So what I'm going to do is help along the ones that are already splitting by using a shim and a persuader. A shim is just a scrap piece of wood. You can buy these in bundles at the Home Depot. It's got a taper to it that allows you to kind of get it in. And this is a, a rubber mallet. I don't want to use an actual hammer because it could dent the wood or split it all together. It's too heavy. It's just kind of just a persuasion technique. So we're gonna go through some of these. Um, so one reason that we're gonna do it this way instead of um, just split, like pulling them, forcing them apart is that you can see here that this, um, I split apart, this is the actual seam right here. And this is where the wood just kind of gave up. So we're gonna have to figure out a different way to read here this piece to that piece so we can glue them together or start the uh, the biscuits down a little bit further. So this looks pretty good. The seams are, are, aren't very bad, so we'll probably just keep that together. And um, if, it, if it does come unglued, we can re-glue it, but that's not a problem. Just the ones that have big gaps that need to really see better days. I'm just gonna stick this right down here. Do that. So this side's already open. Again, just like uh, all of these pieces are numbered on the end, so I know which order they go in. So I'm just gonna keep them all lined up before I put the biscuits in. As I'm going through here, I'm only doing a little bit and going through, because if you try to drive this all the way down, it'll split really fast, and it really increases the likelihood of you damaging the wood. So I'm trying to go a little bit at a time and just kind of 
slowly easing it apart as opposed to, because if I just did it on this end, it would be the same as just popping it apart. Of course, I don't know how old this glue is, so. I would venture to say at least 30 years. So you'll see that this popped off really nice and clean. It looks like there's little to no glue, so I don't really know what they put on here. But lucky me, right? Now all of these boards are ready to mark. Uh, now that they're apart, there's a lot of finishing work that'll need to be done just to get years and years of grime off of these boards. However, what's great is that they're all pretty well planed and they've got really nice thickness to them. So even when I sand it down, it won't get flimsy. What I'm going to do is clamp these all together and then mark out where all of the biscuits go. It's typically you do it at least six inches from the end, just in case you want to trim, trim them off. It won't be right there and show. Uh, the typically it's every, depending on which biscuit you use and who you're talking to, uh, between six and 12 inches apart. And I'm going to do about 10 inches apart, but I'm also, because each side of this is going to have a biscuit in it, I'm going to alternate where it is. So if you think of bricks, um, it'll be like that. So we're going to mark what that looks like. Biscuits. <laughs> Let's get to biscuiting. We're going to get to gluing these up. We've cut all of our biscuits and made sure that all of the slots are clean. Usually I'll just take a biscuit and get scrape it through the, the hole to make sure that there isn't any sawdust in there so you can make sure that it fits down flush with it. You won't have any problems whenever you're persuading it in. I'm using number 20 biscuits that come in a can like this. This is 100, I got it from the Home Depot. Um, uh, we're gonna use uh, this brush. This is a plastic silicone brush and you can use anything to make sure that you get it on the surface and smear it on there. But I like this because the directions say to let it dry and then just pull it out and I'm lazy. So washing paint brushes isn't really my favorite thing. So this one I like is still kind of wet on there. So we'll just keep using it. So we're gonna make sure it gets down in all of the holes and is flat on the surface and then we're going to just build it up like that and persuade it in and lay it flat, clamp it down. So that last piece was a little different because I just glued it on because it is 
a little narrow and I didn't want for the biscuit to come out the other side since it's on the end. So I just, I'm gonna glue that one on. See if we can get away with that. We've got everything laid out and I've tightened down the clamps just enough to get them close together so you start to see a little bit more squeeze out of the glue. What I'm gonna do is put down some wax paper and wax paper, not just for the kitchen. When you do this, and I'm, what I'm gonna do is put a piece of wood and clamp it down on the end to make sure that as this dries, it's drying flat, as flat as possible. We're gonna take a flat piece of wood and put it right there on the end. So the last thing we're gonna to do to clamp this up is add two clamps to the middle because it's got it on each end really nicely. So let's make sure that the middle stays as tight as the other parts. So if you watch this line right here, as we squeeze close the middle, the glue starts to squeeze out. So that's where you know that they're actually touching, which the whole point. Again, as we tighten this down, we should see a squeeze out come between here. Better. So there are different schools of thought on to whether or not to clean up the glue before it dries or after and you know I'm gonna be planning and sanding this anyway so I'm just gonna leave it let it dry like this and I don't know if I have a preference on the which way but you know what here's we'll do it we'll do a test we'll do a field test this one we've kind of cleaned up let me get a, a rag as much off of this part as possible and see which I like better. This has been curing for a little over 24 hours. The glue says to, to wait 24 hours for it to harden appropriately, which I waited at least that long. So we're gonna undo this and see how it turned out. I know there'll be some sanding in our future, but I think for the most part it did pretty well. So, there we go, we're gonna plane all this off after we get the other one glued up. We're gonna take this uh, planer this is a hand planer. It's basically a blade set at a specific depth and it goes across the wood and shaves off the top layer. Uh, the, there are mechanical equivalents of this and it makes it a lot easier. I think the biggest issue with that is making sure you have the right width that will fit into the machine. And um, there are also uh, hand planers or belt sanders, a lot of different ways to do this to get it down. Um, we're gonna do it this way. Plain away. Plain away. Plain away. Yeah. Don't work. <laughs> there are a couple of notes on using a hand planer uh, like most anything you should go with the grain however with this if you take too big of a notch it'll create a, a run in it that will pull off a bigger chunk than you would would have hoped um, especially when we're doing it this way um, going at a 45 degree angle helps too 
and I'll be doing all sorts of different things to see what works but I think the biggest thing is don't put too much pressure on it and don't force it because you can get chunks taken out of it real quick if you're not um, careful also make sure that your blade is sharp if it's if it's not doing what it should then it might be dull and you'll need to sharpen it one thing that is great about using older wood is as you peel away these layers you start to see the clean grain below it it's also a good indicator that if the piece next to it is not coming off you haven't gone down far enough your fingers are very good tools also uh, to see you could usually feel the difference uh, between the boards so make sure that you're trusting your 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 senses here So I planed both of the sides to where they're pretty close to even. It got all of the glue out of out of the seams here and made sure that it felt pretty flat to the touch. I still got some more work to do to where it feels like I'm going across a flat surface, which I'll get to that. But this is a full board uh, glued up. I did two the two pieces and then just did the one glue joint and we're letting it cure. I put these on the edges. Um, again, just like I did with this piece because I wanted to make sure that I know that this piece is flat or relatively flat. I wanted to make sure that as the glue dried that it had a reference that it wouldn't start to bow up or down. I wanted to make sure that it would stay flat because it's a tabletop. That's what I'm going for. We are going to plane this a little bit more and then sand it to where it's really nice to the touch. The planing gets it most of the way there, the sanding gets it all the way there, so I'll be using a pretty high grit. Since glue squeezes out on both sides, I'm gonna do a, just a really nice light uh, plane on the back of this. So as I'm putting the bottom together, I know that that'll sit flush as well, especially where the apron or the legs are gonna go. I've gone ahead and started sanding i i'm gonna try to get pretty close in this i don't know if you can tell my planing is not the best but it did get most of it fairly even which is what i was going for so i'm going back over it with 80 grit you can see how much better it looks uh, between between here and here and so i'm just getting the big parts off of it extra glue and then i'm going to go over it with 150 and 220 as well it shouldn't take nearly as long but um, because i'm not as careful as i should be uh, and not as efficient at the planer i'm gonna have to write some of my errors with the gouges and that type of thing so uh, we're taking out as many as we can and then we'll just get it nice and soft to the touch sorry about the lawnmower but so is life. Uh, what we're going to do to finish this off is uh, cut off the ends of the board to where they're even. Um, I tried my best uh, to align these, but I didn't do a perfect job. So we're just going to chop them off and make sure that they're done. So what I've done is installed a straight edge here at the uh, width of this circular saw. So what I did was I measured, I know that the blade is right here on this little notch right down here. So I've aligned it to fit right here and it's just going to run straight up against this edge and I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm doing a good straight job. Uh, we're just clamping it down and turning this. So we're going to cut this off and we should be done with our tabletop. Voila, we are done. Guys, I have a couple of notes on this process. First, the tops look lovely. I, I love them. They are imperfect, but I plain them by hand and I think that that is an endeavor in and of itself and I really enjoyed it. Would I do it again? Probably not. I will probably invest in a planer a machine planer to 
do my tabletops from now on. I think it takes a lot of time out of the process. So I've done it. We can say that I've done it. I've put a lot of hand block planing hours into this <laughs> into this project and I'm good. So that part, I, I really liked it. I thought it was fun. Second part is that tabletop got real heavy real fast. And I'm sorry that you guys couldn't see me struggling with it because if you're like me, you like to watch people struggle. Just a little bit, not, not like in a mean way, just in like a, do you need help? Like all you have to do is ask for it. I didn't ask for help and there was a big crash boom bang moment and thank goodness Justin was around and he came down to check on me and it was comical now, then it, it was not. Uh, I don't know what part of me is headstrong, but mostly all of it, but I didn't want any help and that's not the way to go about doing this. You can injure yourself and like really badly you can break everything and have to start over and that's more infuriating than anything else. So ask for help if it gets too heavy. Make sure that for parts that you can't handle on your own that you can come up with some other system to smush them together or to but the approach that I took I tried to do it on two heavy pieces and it it was terrible. So ask for help. It's it's not a weakness. It's it's smart and I was not so smart for parts of these. So the next part is going to be the base. And I have some sketches, I have some ideas of what I want it to look like, but the big things are it needs to be um, disassemblable, <laughs> just in case I need to move or move it or uh, something, but a uh, super heavy workbench is great for not letting it like move across the floor when you're trying to do something on top of it, but it's also, really bad to move a thousand pound um, piece of equipment. I am gonna put casters on it, I know that, but how am I gonna do it? Still working through that. So that'll be in the next part. I'll walk you through my design process. I'll walk you through how I like to figure it out and some of the resources that I use because there are some people who've done some amazing work in their workbenches, but if it doesn't suit you and what you've got, then it's, it's gonna be wonderful and to plan, but it might not fit your exact needs. So I'm taking some of those things and making it my own. So while you're at home, during our stay at home time during coronavirus, let me know what you what you think, if you've done any of the projects, but the biggest question I wanna know, and I've been thinking about this for a couple of days, Justin brought it up and I was like, I really wanna know. What is your favorite tool? Y'all know that circular saw is like my jam, but I'm quickly finding that I use, this is my favorite quite a bit. I wanna know what your favorite tool is in the shop and why, and if I need to get it, because always looking for tools, like not people tools, but tools. All right, I'll see y'all later.